YouTube channel. I'm excited to be here talking to you today and I hope that your day is a fantastic one. Today I would like to talk about some ways that we can induce attention from children when they aren't particularly interested in giving us their attention. I'm going to use as an example one of our story times in my classroom. In case you are maybe a newer follower of mine, or maybe this is the first video that you have ever watched of mine. If so, hello, welcome. If that's the case, I want to share that I am a speech language pathologist. It, it, that involves a bunch of training, and I've never actually talked about that. So, maybe I should. It's a great profession, very flexible, and very, very fun, because I get to see all sorts of progress from the students that I work with, and it makes me very happy Every step that they take, every skill that they learn, everything we practice changes their lives because they can communicate in new ways and that's really exciting to me. So obviously I love what I do. I don't see private clients anymore. Instead, I wrote a curriculum which I am continuing to improve and develop and which I distribute. And it is a curriculum that teaches spiritual truths to kids with developmental delays and disorders such as autism, I distribute it to churches across the world. If you are interested in finding out more about that, I will put a link down below to my website and you can check that out. Or of course, you can leave me questions down below or you can email me if you wish to find out more. It's super fun. I love what I do here as well. Also, to keep my skills sharp and because it's my calling, I run the special needs team, which I call the one-to-one -one team at my local church. And I've done this at a couple of different churches now as my husband and I moved from, my husband and I developed a program at one church and it grew and got very large. And then we passed, passed the baton and moved on to another church where we are doing the same thing. And it's very exciting to sort of plant ministries this way. And it's super fun because I get to meet lots of different students, I get to have continue to have a wide variety of experiences and I get to learn from all of these kids and their families and it's my favorite. It's really fun. One of the things that happens in my classroom on a regular basis is that my kids don't like to sit at a table and do anything because they would rather play with my super awesome toys and sensory equipment, which I understand. However, the purpose of them being there is Number one, I want to keep them safe. Number two, I want them to have a wonderful experience so that they love coming to church and coming to see us. And third, I want them to make friends with the other students that they encounter. Also, I would love them to get to know Jesus, to get to experience what it's like to have a friendship with Jesus and to know that God loves them and to grow in their relationship with God. Of course, if you are not a spiritual person, that's fine. Take what you like from the video and use it. And uh, don't just turn it off just because I'm talking about God stuff. Pass that by for now. Maybe it will come up again in your life at some other point. So, most of my students are not all that interested in a story time, learning a lesson, doing that sort of thing. And many of them have difficulty with motor activities too because it's difficult for them to do those things sometimes with with their delayed motor skills. There are different ways to encourage kids to participate in stuff that they otherwise might not want to. And I do need to say that there are different levels of participation. I'm a big fan of what I call, what is called in my profession, graduated participation, which means that kids participate at different levels, as I just said. So we have one student in my class who participates by wandering and kind of circling the table as we are reading our story. That for him, I would consider participation because he's nearby and for him, that's a big deal. He used to just be over in the corner squealing and now he's quiet for the most part or making happy noises and walking around our table. That's good improvement. Hopefully someday he will want to sit at the table with us or at least be willing to if we support him properly. And that would be another improvement. And we love improvement, any little tiny one. But we also love it if kids are in the same room with us, 
in the same vicinity as us. And that can be participation for some of our kids. For other kids, participation is helping us read the story. I have a number of boys who love to be the teacher, who love to show off that they're learning to read. And it's very, very slow if I let one of our students read the story sometimes. But it's rewarding because the child is participating in a new way and wanting to help his peers learn something, which is really fun for us. So we encourage that whenever possible. Our, my curriculum does the same story for four weeks in a row because we all know that repetition is what helps us learn the best. And we do different activities, different art projects every week related to the same story. So I don't let the students read the story the very first time because I want to be the one who implants in the story the right cadence and the right focus and the questions that I ask about each illustration and that kind of thing. But the third time and the fourth time that we read that story, sometimes it really helps to have one of our students be the teacher for that part and it can be really fun. As part of graduated participation, I do have different expectations of each one of my students. There's one student I know will try to run and get in the swing and giggle. He'll just giggle and giggle. And we just have to calmly tell him it's not time for a swing. We sit in the chair. And then we remind him of what our story time rules are. Quiet hands, quiet feet, quiet mouth, sit in chair. We have visuals of that. And we repeat it most weeks. We have each of our students repeat that at the table. And it reminds us of how our bodies are supposed to be during story time, because this is a learning time. Do you remember what our story time rules are? What are they? Can you tell me? That one is quiet mouth, right? What's that one? Hands. What do we do with our hands? Hands quiet. Hands quiet. Good job. What do we do with that one? Uh, you sit quiet. That's right. We sit in our chair. And what about that one? Uh, keep, 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 keep. Your feet to yourself. That's right, keep your feet to yourself. Those are great rules, right? Because then we can hear the story and we're not hurting our friends. So we repeat that with him. We let him be the example of how we're supposed to sit at story time. And usually that's the kind of redirection that he requires. One of my other students likes to be silly and slip under the table or put his feet on the table or sit on the table and he just likes to push boundaries. He's kind of an oppositional kind of kid, um, very difficult family life, difficult upbringing to this point and um, we've been working with him since he was two on working better within structure because he pushes back against every kind of suggestion or limit or rule. And so this is one of the things that we're working on is sitting appropriately like a student should sit. He's got super high cognitive and language skills, but these other behavioral things and social things are really delayed for him. So that's what we're working on. And the best way to help him get involved is to do something surprising. And so I'm going to play a clip for you in a little bit. And you'll notice in the clip that I get a crazy facial expression, which is very important for drawing kids in. My voice changes. I make a, a very surprised sound. And I ask him what he sees, what he thinks the right answer is. And he loves to give the right answer. And then I can reinforce what a great job he's doing. With any sort of behavioral issue, we always want to focus on what the kids are doing right. It's very easy to say, stop that, sit down, you're too noisy, be quiet, stop walking around, sit in your chair. It's not as easy to tell kids what to do, like the rules, quiet hands, quiet mouth, quiet feet, sit in chair. I didn't do them in the right order, but that's okay. We tell the kids what to do, and then we reinforce, we compliment them and celebrate when they're doing a good job at that. 
You'll also notice in the following clip that I have one little guy at the end of the table who you would think would be incredibly distracting. And in a typical classroom, maybe he would. This is a child who doesn't have functional uh, verbal language at this point. It's great cognitive skills, very good communication, just not verbal communication yet. He's very good at telling us what he doesn't want and communicating that very, very clearly through his behavior. He really hates story time and he doesn't like other kids very much. Usually he's at a different table all the way across the room. Okay, our room's super tiny and we have two tables and there's one in this area and there's one in that area. And we do that on purpose because our kids sometimes just don't like each other and a lot of our kids don't like anyone all that much. And they come to love us, I'm just sure of it. <laughs> Most of them really do. In fact, all of them have, but it sometimes just takes a little while for them to warm up to us, but also to their peers. Peers are weird, and everyone in our class has some sort of strange behavior or quirk, and sometimes those quirks aren't as understandable to the other kids as you would think they would be. It's really funny because one of my little guys with a social deficit constantly says, that kid's weird, or he doesn't talk right, and we have to point out to him to him, you seem weird because you're mean all the time or because you say rude things or because you try to sit on the table. He thinks that's weird. We have to constantly point out to all of our students that each one of us has some stuff that we're working on and we're all working on different things, but our things are gonna seem weird to everyone else. Nobody else is gonna understand why I'm working on not being angry at other drivers and being content with my situation even though I would prefer it to be slightly different. I have different things I'm working on than you do and my kids are working on all different things so it's good to remind them of that. That aside, this student on this particular day was sitting at the same table with peers at story time. That's a huge deal for him. Most of the time he's sitting at the other table and we were working on helping him actually do point to the main idea strip as we are reading and we're working on him seeing the illustrations and actually caring what they are even though he's some distance away and you know he can't play with toys during that time he's not allowed to do anything else he's just refuses to sit at the same table with us that's okay with me but in this particular clip it's a huge moment for us that he was willing to sit at the table with us. And so, even though he's making noises, he's, oh, and sometimes we do allow transition objects, and I think he's playing with a dinosaur or a crocodile, something like that, I can't remember exactly what, but you'll see in the video. And it's making noises, and it's talking, and he's making some racket. But his racket is not distracting the other kids at the table, and, He's at the table, and that's a big deal. So there's a lot of thinking that goes into what we do allow and what we don't allow. We have to know our kids. We have to know the days that we can push a little bit, and we have to know the signals when we're pushing too hard and the kid's gonna melt down or freak out or throw a chair or something. And we all mess that up sometimes and push too hard or not hard enough. But we need to keep pushing. We can't become stagnant in allowing that kid, if he did the same thing every week, the kid at the end of the table with the toys, if he did the same thing every week, at some point, pretty quick, we would say, okay, toys are all done. Now it's listening time. And we would take that next step with him. We always wanna be taking the next step, even though it, it pushes the kid because that's that's how we all grow and improve we take new steps so you'll notice me doing a few things in this video to gather and entice the energy and the attention of our kids and i would like you to take a peek at it and see what you see don't worry we, we wanted your hands in there <laughs> this is so beautiful hey, sit. Sit. we'll do that in a minute that's our art Remember, sit in chair is one of our classroom rules. On your tushy. All right, here we go. When I love God, I do what he says. When I love God, I do what he says. This is called obeying God. God says, let Anna have the truck. And the boy says, 
Okay. That is obeying God. Quiet voice, alien. Sometimes I want to make a bad choice. God knows that making good choices is best for me. When I love God, I obey him. God says, nice hands. And this girl says, no, God. And she, oh, she's doing to the dog's tail. Oh, she's the dog's tail. Is that a good choice? That means the dog is sad and the girl is sad too. This girl, this time the girl says, yes, God, I will have nice hands. And then the dog is happy and the girl is happy. That doesn't say God, it says son. It looks like oh. it, huh? That was weird, right? Sometimes I want to be mean to people. Yeah. Feet, feet under the table. Feet under the table. Thank you. I know that God wants me to be kind to people. God knows that being kind to people is best for me. God says, be kind. And this boy says, yes, God. And he plays catch with his friend. And then she's happy and he's happy. Hey Jackson, I need you to tell me what's happening on this side. This this time the boy says, no God, and what's he do to the girl's hair? Looks like he's got something in his hand. <gasps> he's got her hair and it's terrible. Look how messy it is. And she's sad and he's sad too. That is no good. That's funny. Sometimes I feel like not listening to grown ups. Oh. I know God wants me to listen no. to grown-ups. God knows that listening to grown-ups is best for me. Why listen to grown-ups. She says, no, God. Oh, she's throwing hey. me the wall. And they are breaking. But on this side, she's making a good choice. She says, yes, God. And she's putting the bowl on the table. Let's see what's next. Oh, the apple. Oh, and the apple on the table. I can trust God because he knows what is best for me. When I love God, I do what he says. God says, I love you. I want what's best for you. And the kids say, we trust you. I will do what you say. Let's read it together. When I love God, I do what he says. Nice reading. Nice reading. Alien, your turn. Cannon, alien, and robot. When I love God... I do what he says. Nice job reading. Good job. Yay! I love my kids, and I love being in that classroom. It's just so much fun. Now that you have watched the video, I assume that you have some thoughts in your head about some ways that you can entice your students or your children into attending to you when they would rather not. And I need to reinforce that enticing them is the actual goal. We can't force kids to do most things. We can force them to do things physically. I mean, we can physically force them to put their trash in the bin. We can't physically force a child to learn or to form a relationship with us or to communicate her thoughts and ideas to us. Those things, the child has to decide from the inside. And when I entice a child into a relationship with me, that's fun and that's reinforcing. If I try to force it, it's not fun and it's not reinforcing and I'm not going to get the kind of results that I want from that sort of interaction. We always want to be wooing the kids and trying to snap their attention with our facial expressions, with our compliments, with our voice with our mannerisms. We want to be interesting enough that the kids can't not interact with us because we're just too much fun and too interesting to ignore. I hope this video was helpful to you. Your homework for this week is to think about the clip that I played for you and pick out one thing from that video that you would like to try with your students or with your own children and use it this week. Let me know in the comments down below what you're going to try and how it works once you do try it. Also, if you wouldn't mind, if you're not already subscribed, please click the subscribe button. It really helps these videos get out to more people and I know that there are tons of people who need to hear this information and who need to know better strategies for working with the kids in their lives. Also, 
click that notification bell. Sometimes the notifications don't go out properly and the bell means that you will get a little notification on your phone that I have published a new video and so you'll be able to watch it at your leisure. I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being the kind of person who's interested in improving your own skills and benefiting the kids in your life. You are great and I appreciate you. See you in my next video. Bye.